right. I'm doing your high priority session on the exact same day you booked it. It was perfect timing. And it's so good to hear from you. Man, what have you been doing the last few months? <laughs> All right, probably staying inside. I don't know, coronavirus? Um, things been going good? <laughs> Anything interesting? Did you get a new cat? All right. I'm really excited to be moving forward. I remember the session. It was it was really awesome. And it was about self-love and self-worth. And honestly, just rereading the original goals. I mean, you, you're so you're so there's something very natural and something that I feel is a lot more normal than your society or your history or memories have allowed you to give it credit for, you know? It's interesting because after reading the goals, I feel like like there's a heaviness in the heart. There's a bit of energetic resistance, fear of self-expression. Hmm. It's all just kind of feelings right now. But I'm going to relax. This has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with tapping into your energy and tapping into what you're sharing. And just exploring how I'm vibing with it as I, I'm reading and going through it. Okay, I'm ready. I'm totally ready. I'm putting it out there, sacral chakra healing. But, I mean, there's the root of what you're sharing here. You're sharing so much, so much meaning. So much meaning. And... I want to get into the root of what you're sharing and what can we do to bring peace to it all it is that feeling again it's kind of like my heart's jammed up it's kind of like my throat's jammed up my third eye's jammed up I'm just gonna have to it feels just very heavy right now so I just have to simply let this energy circulate <laughs> I'm opening a door and I'm I'm slowly opening it and saying, hello, can I come in? Can I come in? <laughs> I'm kind of like a parent knocking on a teenager's door, like a teenage child's door. Like you're wanting to respect their privacy, but you do need to come in. I feel kind of like I'm taking that role. When I... I do open the door. You never say, yes, I can come in. But I do just continue to open the door and this gets even more uncomfortable. There's light in this room. It doesn't necessarily look like a bedroom or look like any type of room. It glows in here. It's really quite bright. It feels like a giant eyeball. Like an unseen monster, like a like something nobody wants to look at, hidden, on the other side of the wall. So I'm I'm literally I'm, I'm in a dark, shadowy place. I'm saying, "Can I come in?" I'm slowly opening the door. Now I'm coming into a room that's full of light. It's very yellow color. You could say kind of golden, kind of white, but it's really intense. There's plenty of light in here. It doesn't seem like anybody's in here. It's a pretty narrow rectangular room. Now um, it's almost like the room is sort of floating in the universe, in the void. Um, so I can kind of see above above it um, and I can kind of see what's on the other side of the room. Kind of like a twilight zone moment. And there's this just enormous, it's a cyclops, it's kind of animal looking. It's a giant being. Um... It's got kind of pig-like features. It's got brown skin, brown hair. Like the face, it seems to have a snout, a kind of pig-like snout. It kind of makes me think of a Neanderthal. Like a caveman mixed with animal. hiding on the other side of the wall. It's like a big monster. It's a, a hidden monster. <sighs> it's 
pretty hard to breathe through because it is so tight in the heart. And there are um, images connecting me with the sacral chakra. They aren't really, they're kind of like masturbation images. But the the energetic meaning of them is basically just looking at a photo. It doesn't have a lot more depth other than what it's expressing is just masturbation. And it's kind of just kind of quickly happening just over there, you know, but where all the energy is circulating, where the intensity is, um, the question marks are, the most serious aspect of what I'm looking at is this scene with this rectangular room and the light and this big monster hiding in the dark, in the void of where the room is just sort of at. It looks like a bathroom where this masturbation is going on. It's just sort of, um, I'm just making eye contact with the Cyclops monster. Cyclops is starting to um, change the face a bit, so it does now have two eyes looking at me. Still looks kind of beast and man. <clears throat> I'm trying to let go of the room. I'm trying to just let see past or just see that the room is served its purpose. I'm just trying to go straight to this big monster, but um, I'm kind of stuck in the room. And I don't feel it's right to go out the way that I came in, as in to leave the room. I feel like I need to stay in this room and continue to tell the monster that it's safe. Oh, wow. Very, very heavy in the heart, very heavy in solar plexus, very heavy in the third eye right now. The throat feels a little bit lighter. I know we're looking at the sacral chakra, but this is about the sacral chakra. And its vulnerabilities are really deeply tied into the heart and the, the emotions and the mind. What the mind sees, how the mind judges what it sees. How what it, it sees is judged by others, right? How that makes you feel inside yourself. I'm going to just strip this monster of the fur. <laughs> I'm just going to, I feel like it needs to be exposed. So to take the fur away is more exposure. And I'm not allowed to do that. Keep showing itself as naked, but it isn't. It just keeps reappearing with all this, this cover up. Hmm. Sending it images like the prom memory, the memory with um, the friend, the younger friend at the sussy, or the parent, your parents were kind of calling you in and you felt ashamed about that. I'm sending the mem memory of the thigh, pinching the thigh. Let's see what the monster does as I send these uh, memories. Well, it sort of it doesn't feel one way or another. It's, it's quite neutral, which surprises me because there is so much intensity in the heart and the motions in the mind. It's not really having a reaction to it, although it is acknowledging this. I ask him if he knows who he is. I'm going to have to become one with the monster. I am at least able to get closer to it, whereas it, I was basically still stuck in the room. And I've been trying to project closer and closer and closer and closer. I'm actually out of the room, although the room is still very close to me, still there. Um, but I'm kind of levitating and this giant is here, like 60 feet tall or something. So I'm going to merge with it and now be the monster and see how what I learn from that. Uh, 
because it's a it's it doesn't know how it doesn't know what emotions to choose and it feels like it's it's best to choose to have not an emotion and so if it's neutral if the monster chooses to feel neutral is that okay the monster chooses to feel shame to should it should this monster be ashamed should this monster have a right to even feel pleasure of that kind? So it feels like neutral is the best choice because at least it provides some kind of answer, something to work with. So I'm going to create, I'm going to allow this to be pleasurable because neutral is not helping you to get to the other side. So you're going to have to choose an emotion. If you choose the emotion of shame, that's okay too. That you have to feel shame then. And then you have to work on understanding this through your feelings. Feeling shame. Feeling pleasure. Because feeling neutral gives you a right to not feel anything at all. And then now you're in this place where it's like, well, what is, what is this about? What is this? What is my relationship with this? How do I bring this into balance? Because you you have such a neutral energetic standpoint, you kind of develop this. Is there a, a saying like a one-eyed monster? And that's kind of paralleling with the ma male part is a one-eyed monster. Is that what this is paralleling? Is this a... It just came to me. All right. I ask him, I mean, it's like a dirty joke or something. So I'm asking, are you a one eye? Are you a one eyed monster? Are you literally what I think you are? <laughs> I'm expecting him to turn into a male like part. Like I, I, I'm, I'm just telling him, it's like, there's nothing to hide here. If you need to be, I don't know why the word dick comes to mind. If you need to be a dick, then you need to just be a dick. <laughs> but let's see what he says. Oh, I'm creating emotion. I'm creating emotional reactions to this. This is kind of, it's like he's falling apart. Like, um, it's like he's shedding. His body is shedding. Like his face is shedding. His legs, his arms, his body is like shedding like tufts of hair. But it's literally he's turning into just a shedded pile of himself. Which is good. This is change. He's hiding in this pile. He's very, very small. Just hiding in this pile of... It's like hiding inside of a hay, bale of hay or something. Like trying to find a needle in a haystack. He's very small. Which could be reflecting of... Um, how he feels about himself. Like you ever feel s just like you want to hide under a rock? That's kind of what he this means to me. So I just am really enormous now and he's really small. <sighs> I will say this is making progress in your heart, in your third eye, in your emotions. But it is the sacral chakra is like all ears like ready to to find the balance that it seeks but it needs the heart it needs the emotions it needs the mind to work on their balance in order for sacral chakra to work on its balance so um sac i can tell it's like sacral chakras all ears are are open eyes are open like it's it's pro it's watching it's it's um, a part of this it just a lot of it is your heart emotions mind <sighs> I'm trying to be smaller because this is making it so hard to, because I'm so enormous now, my hands are freaking enormous. And so now for me to try to get a needle out of a haystack is like impossible because I'm too enormous. Is this like sizes everything, you know? Too small, too big? Like is this having to do with male body parts? growing and shrinking 
but there is something about this. It's very strange that I'm so enormous. Like, I can't get smaller. And I'm trying because I'm trying to get to you in the haystack of yourself. Hiding in all the, that. So I'm going to have to project my consciousness into you as this very small you. Hiding. This is hard. This is not easy to do this. Man. You're going to have to really, really pay attention here. All right. I'm not able to do it. So all I can do then is take the scene and set it over there. And then we're just going to have to take another route. So I'm just, I say, okay. So I'm not allowed to do that or I'm not able to. So I have to accept that and now open up to the next thing. The main thing about that scene is I've reached a point where I can't change the circumstance. I can't change myself. I can't reach this this hidden information. <sighs> this hidden information isn't going to come out and talk to me. Um, so I'm at a standstill. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to go straight into your sacral chakra now. Okay. <sighs> Not wanting to... You're open, the door is open here, but it's... What I'm walking into is kind of covered in a black um, layer, a black liquid. And you're here and you're covered in a black liquid. It kind of is giving you ability to cloak yourself so that you're not fully exposed. It's like a safety measure. I ask you if you'd rather drink a glass of mud or would you like to drink a glass of clean water? And I say right now you're choosing mud. And clean water is what you deeply want, deep down inside. So you need to choose what it is that you actually deeply want. But you're talking to me about it's easy to drink a glass of water. It's not easy to be um, exposed where I'm uncomfortable with that exposure. So I just, it's like a ghost hiding in a blanket or something. Um, even though you do want to come out, you want to come clean, I guess, you can't yet. <laughs> so I'm just waiting. And I send you a message that says that I'm being told that you have to say I am ready to come clean. And once you do that, we can actually move forward. And you do have the courage to do this. And it's okay to feel shame. Even if you don't, if, even if you shouldn't. I mean, even if it really, like, why should you have to feel shame? Well, for some reason, it's, it's become shame, okay? So, the only way to heal shame is just to feel it. And once you choose to sit with it and feel it, now you can access the other side of it. Otherwise, it's kind of a resistance, so then it just lingers, and, and now shame is still there, you know? This is hard for you to say, I'm ready to come clean, because it feels like you're exposed to a judgment, a potential judgment, a judgment from yourself, a judgment of society, a judgment... It feels kind of judgment-y. Me judging you. I 
I need you to say that I'm not afraid of judgment and I am choosing to come clean. I am acknowledging that I am clean. This is, this is actually quite effective. This really is. Because I am starting to see this black liquid is drying up. It's becoming less of itself. Hmm. I'm wanting to... So sexuality has a lot of meaning to you. I mean, when you come clean, there's a pig here. And then there's images of what is like bestiality. Making love, human makes love to animal. And you want to know if that is a sh shameful choice. This isn't saying that you've ever made that choice, but you want my opinion on that. I ask you, are, the only way to truly answer it is to understand if you are following your heart or are you following an insecurity. But either way, there should never be any shame because you should own every single choice you've ever made, right? You should stand by every single choice you've ever made. If you're having a hard time standing by the choice, then, you, then that is the learning. That's actually the most beautiful part of every choice. Is when you discover that you either still agree or you disagree. And your feelings about it have changed. Because you change over time as well. So what's the choice? I mean, I need to see the, the example because there's going to be so many different versions of bestiality. What the choice is to pursue that. Because this isn't a textbook situation. This isn't like um, the Catholic religion. Bestiality is bad. The man shall not sleep with the beast, you know. Um, masturbation is bad. Like, the... Life is not a book. It isn't a rule book. Life is has to be interpreted based on what are your insecurities. Are you following your heart? Um, there really isn't any such thing as right and wrong. On the energy side of things, there is no such thing as right or wrong. There is balance. You can have a more harmonious balance the more you follow your heart, but as human beings, we struggle to follow our heart, so we get ourselves into different types of experiences. And then we learn about ourselves from those choices. So were the choices bad or were they good? Because we're learning about ourselves, right? You you say, so bestiality is is good then. <laughs> Let me see. The human doesn't live in the spirit mind, doesn't live in the energy world, in that type of awareness. We're kind of separate from it. Like for me, I have to go into a journey state to access it. And because I've been in the journey state so many times, I bring the awareness back so I could live my life more based on what I'm aware of from the journey state, from the energy space. But as a human being, we're kind of left in the dark feeling and we have to start making decisions for ourselves based on what we feel we is right. But based on what we feel instinctive. And then we follow through with the instinct and then afterwards and over time, now we can look back and decide how we feel about things. Is it wrong? Is any of, of the process of being human wrong? You're talking to me about the type of person that would have the, the character to follow through with an act of that kind. And I say in the end it's all judgment. 
It's insecurities. It's... It's exploring things. It's curiosity. This conversation is really helpful. Because it's starting to help you see that you are the judgmental person. Now. All these people have played the judgmental role to keep you in some type of place of belief. A belief system. And now as you're older, now you're the judgmental person. And keeping yourself, trying to keep yourself in a place in order to know yourself. We all want to know ourselves as, as easily as we could read a book. You got to let go of that. You got to embrace knowing that you're infinite and you're so dynamic and complex you couldn't possibly be described in a book. You're just too in interesting. You're just far too interesting. <laughs> so don't try to corner yourself. I feel like you should just embrace your true nature. The more you tune into what feels right to you, you're giving yourself permission to be yourself. Give yourself permission to be yourself. And it's okay to wear different hats. To, to try to explore saying masturbation is a beautiful thing. And I'm going to give myself permission to feel beautiful in that process. That's one side of this. Giving yourself permission to do it differently. Letting go of every judgment you've ever been aware of towards this, okay? And towards experiences that you had at different times of your life, right? But I want to look at the, the disappointing side. So a after orgasming, it's kind of disappointing feeling. It's not as fun anymore. It feels like a wrong feeling. I want to explore what that is. Because this conversation is helping to open up your collective minds who want somebody to tell them right and wrong, who want to know what they need to believe, who want some kind of direction or pathway. Um, but it's giving them more of an, a, an ability to just love themselves for being themselves love you then for being you and you becoming aware am i judging myself right now if i don't want to be judged by others then why am i judging myself right now can't i just like masturbation so then why do i feel wrong about it why why does it becomes kind of a wrong feeling after i've orgasmed so self-discovery but this conversation is helping your heart open up your emotions open up your third eye open up it's creating more of a security safety and a self-love type vibe but i do want to at least see if we can find out more if what about this you know orgasm doesn't feel right no so there's more to you and the conversation of, it's almost like you had a lifetime or multiple lifetimes where you did, you did explore sexuality with animals. And you never were able to decide if that was wrong or not. It's almost like it made you feel wrong, but it also made you feel right. And why would it be wrong if it also felt right? And why can't I have sex with animals? That's why you're so wanting to know my answer to this, because you still are trying to find the answer to this. And something of these memories, and you're, you ha seem to have a wise mind, too, trying to make up your mind about it. And it's, it's actually layering over into right now because some parts of what you're feeling with masturbation are bringing back memories from other times when you've explored confusion with sexuality. I have to go into this here. I had to find out then why were you attracted to having sex with animals? You just, you just like, just tell me. 
Just tell me. Is it okay? <laughs> it's like, I don't... I have to look at your energy field to understand your balance. And where your balance was at. What inspired the choice. And now, after making the choice where your energy balance is at. Like, it, in order to truly understand and to give you perspective on it. Because life isn't as simple as yes or no. Life is, is more complicated than that because we're understanding the dynamics and the complexities of you and your choice. So, you just, you say, I just like sex. That, I just like sex. And I like sex so much that I just wanted to have sex. It's like living on a farm, just wanted to have sex with the animals too. I just like sex. It's like, okay, so why, why would I be judging that harshly? Like, because people don't, this isn't, isn't normal to have sex with animals. And you actually did like it. It was actually great because... When you were having sex with animals, the animals wasn't judging you. You could be free, completely and utterly free in the experience from beginning to end. Until you started to wonder if you should be doing this or not. <laughs> but you were actually instinctively just, it was like, there's so many animals too. Like there's so much, to, so much pleasure to be had here. That was the, the most special part about the ex that, that experience was that there was no judgment. The animal does not judge you. The animal enjoys it just as much as you do. And it, it's actually, it was really exciting. Like I can feel that about this. But it was over time that you began to wonder if, if there was something wrong and it started to kind of go in the opposite direction and you started to get like this was really break this was really starting to eat away at your mind i say you're taking it too far you you made a choice you you're acknowledging that you like sex okay you made a choice to explore something out of the box you enjoyed it the reason why you enjoyed it was because you were free and there was no judgment and it was pleasurable. So then you reach a point where you're questioning it. So you have to decide instead of just lingering in the question, you have to decide if you want to continue to have the experience with the animals or if you want to take a break from that. So really all you need to do is decide. You don't have to judge yourself on the choice. You can just simply decide. Do I want to continue or do I want to take a break? And I tell this part of you that why you're questioning it, questioning it just so ruthlessly is because you actually just simply need to take a break. You don't have to judge yourself. You just simply need to take a break from it. Explore sexuality differently. And, and try to decide what, what feels right to you by exploring different avenues of it. It seems to me that in that life there was some kind of insecurity that took place at a young age. And that insecurity made it hard to be more intimate with humans. So, um, and it had to do with the... It's almost like the process of you looking at someone looking at you while you were in a sexual moment. Um... What made it uncomfortable? <sighs> and that kind of took you in a different direction with sexuality. <sighs> but really what you're wanting to do is actually you took the other direction. There's there, You explored that. You It's learning. I mean, th these are experiences here. You can't take the experiences away. You need to love yourself for the choices. 
But really what you're trying to do is get to the root of the insecurity that took place at a, a much younger age. And you needed to work on the shame that you felt in a sexual experience with a human when you're eye to eye, when you're body to body, when you're mind to mind. You're actually, you're actually feeling a lot better. There still seems to be lingering energy residue here about this, but it's like, oh man, big improvement. Because it's, it's helping you to love yourself. It's helping you to understand where choices actually come from. It's okay to make choices. But then once the choice starts to feel wrong, then you, you just simply say, well, do I want to continue with the choice if it feels wrong? Or do I want to take a break from it and explore why it's starting to feel different? Oftentimes taking a break is the right thing to do because it helps you collect yourself and just, just make different choices. Now you could start to see where the insecurity is and start to work on that and maybe try to pursue a human relationship. I mean, it can be pretty, pretty straightforward if you let it. Being human can be complicated, but it also doesn't have to be. You're, this part of you with the animal, the bestiality situation, you're starting to glow and you're kind of like thanking me because you can move on now from this. You can, it's like you can forgive yourself, but you, you don't need to. Forgiveness isn't necessary. You just, it's just like an understanding. And now that you have the understanding, you can circulate the love back into yourself. And you're kind of holding your breath on this, on the energy, in the energy world, this part of your soul was. Oh man, you feel like you just were reborn. It feels like it's a party you just got resurrected. <laughs> yeah, your soul has definitely explored sexuality in a lot of different ways. Everything feels really, like, like, okay with itself. Like, you, this is going to give you a lot to think about, obviously. Um, but uh, your energy field actually feels some, um, like, it's okay to be who you are. And it's okay when things get confusing. And it's okay to decide, well, do I want to continue to masturbate or do I want to take a break from it to understand something else? Or maybe it's okay to just explore more about the meaning of this. But it's okay to even question. I mean, just me talking about it, like, I don't, I don't even feel like I need to say anything else because so much of your energy is just like kind of like a golden amber. Um, it's like a resurrection to, took place inside yourself. So let's just see how this um, helps you feel as the days pass, you know? really glad that you booked the session. I'm so glad you booked it today because I actually had time today to do any session that were to come in. So that's great. <laughs> All right, Tom. Um, gosh, it's always wonderful to connect with you. I hope everything's going well and uh, just have a great day. <laughs>